Hello, I'm Lasse back here with another tutorial for you guys and today we're gonna take a closer look on how to use the eraser tool on concepts. I'll be drawing a sneaker today, which is just something I've been doodling lately, so yeah, let's get started. This time I'm going for a pencil tool for sketching, which is already selected here, so all I'm gonna do is just switch the color to black and let's rename the first layer to sketch. Alright, let's test out the pencil tool a bit. I'm adjusting the width of the tool here. Having it in full opacity is fine, it's still gonna look dynamic and natural thanks to the pressure sensitivity. Next I'm gonna put on the precision mode, pick up the line tool and come up with some guidelines. Now at the moment this is perfectly vertical, so let's just move it to the right and draw our first vertical line. Then I'll reactivate rotation, turn the line tool and draw our horizontal baseline on which the shoe's gonna stand on. That doesn't seem perfectly leveled yet. Let's just fix that real quick. Now, what I'm gonna do is select the first line I drew and make copies of it to help us find the proportions of the shoe. I'm going to draw it facing left so the first section here, which is going to be the opening of the shoe, will reach out almost halfway through the whole thing. And then just divide the rest in two equal sections. Alright, looking pretty good. Feels like these two could go a little bit further to the left. Like that. Cool. Now let's see if I can come up with a shoe sketch. You can see that I'm adjusting the strokes I drew from time to time. I do that with a tap and hold on the screen, then adjust with my fingers. It's very natural, and you can check out our earlier videos for instructions. So here we have a rough sketch showing the shapes and graphic ideas of the shoe. Now it's time to do some refinements, and the way I'm gonna do that is by outlining the drawing's most essential shapes. I'll create a new layer and call it Outlines. These lines are going to define the final shapes of this shoe, so I go ahead and thicken the pencil somewhat, which is going to set them apart from the initial sketch. About 8 points width seems to be working fine on this one. Having control of an entire layer's opacity is very useful in this type of case. Toning down the visibility of this initial sketch helps in seeing lines I missed and makes it a bit sharper as a drawing. Then I'll just finish the line work, do some final tweaks and we're ready for the next step. As always when doing a design rendering like this, it's a good idea to have a solid background color on the item. So I'll create a new layer and name it Base Color. Then I'll tap and hold the new layer and rearrange it all the way to the bottom so the base color I'm about to draw won't cover the line work I just did. Okay, now I'll pick up the fill tool and move up the opacity to 100. Some prefer using a mid gray for the base color and it certainly works for most cases. But I want parts of this shoe to be white so I might as well have those light shades in the base here. Then just follow the outline of the sketch and we have ourselves a solid opaque base to draw on. You can see that the base color I chose is very close to the background behind it. To make the shape stand out, we can now darken the background somewhat. Go to the menu, tap custom color and let's go for another cool grey. Before we start adding color and depth to this shoe, 
I want to add some shoelaces. This is a good place to demonstrate how the eraser tool works. First I'll make sure it's in full opacity, then adjust the width close to what I imagine the laces will be. Make sure you're on the right layer, and then erase a passage for the laces. Hmm, apparently I'm on the sketch layer after all. This is the one I wanted. Okay, so now I'm going to erase a zigzag shape to create a passage for the laces. That's not quite it. You see the eraser tool as well as some of the others is pressure sensitive, so maybe for this one I should use my finger instead, to keep the stroke in constant width. That seems to be doing the trick, let's try it again. Nice. Now let me take this opportunity to show you how you can go back and manipulate the eraser stroke. Tap and hold and you'll see that the eraser isn't permanent, but an adjustable stroke, just like all the others I've drawn. You can make these strokes more visible by going to the menu and activating highlight selection. This setting will give you a better view for adjusting the eraser. And as I mentioned, it's just like any other stroke, meaning you can move it around, adjust the width or smoothness, or do some tweaks using the control points. That looks good to me, but the lines on the sketch layer are still showing, so I want to get rid of those. Before I go on though, I'll deactivate highlight selection. Now another nice thing about having adjustable eraser strokes is the fact that you can apply them to other layers as well. So the sketch lines are still showing. I'll just copy this one, drag it to the sketch layer and it's taken care of. Now I'll just go back to the outlines layer and sketch out the lasers we're still missing. Okay, now while drawing the laces I realized that you might ask, what happens to the eraser strokes when you scale things? That would be a good question, and I'll answer that by showing you. I'll pick up the selection tool, and on the heads up display, switch this from active layer to all layers. This way we're making sure to pick up all the strokes we've drawn. Let's deactivate rotation, and select stretch instead of scale. Now as we make this bigger, all the strokes keep their initial width, including the eraser strokes, making the passage too narrow for the laces. But when using the scale setting, all the strokes scale up in proportion, including the eraser strokes. Because of that, I generally tend to keep the settings on the pop-up menu with the scale and rotation on. Alright. Now it's time to start adding some shadows and depth to this drawing. I'll start by creating a new layer and naming it Shadows. Then I'll set up an airbrush tool with maximum width of 400 points, then turn down the opacity to 15%. I'll set the color of the tool to a dark gray and use it to draw a curved gradient across the side of the shoe, following the general shape. Then I'll select the razor stroke again and start using it to erase the airbrush from areas outside the silhouette. Depending on the complexity of your drawing, there is an optional way of erasing areas around your silhouette. Instead of manually going through the shape, you could harness the existing outlines for this by selecting a stroke from the outlines layer then making a copy of it and moving it to the layer where the eraser action is happening. Then just turn it into an eraser stroke and move it to the right place. This could be done to multiple strokes as well. It isn't the most efficient way in this case though, so I'm gonna finish this the way I started it. Obviously the gradient itself isn't showing a lot of form yet, 
and this is where the eraser tool comes in handy again. Once you set down the opacity to 60% in this case, it can now be used to basically add light to certain areas and thus showing more form. I'll apply this method to a couple of places in the drawing in order to further define the forms. Keeping an eye on the contour lines while doing this helps in positioning these areas touched by light. Same applies to shadows. I'm also adjusting the color and opacity of the gradient a bit while I'm going. Next I'm creating a color layer and moving it just above the base color layer. Using the same method as I did on the base color, I then fill out graphic areas that show different materials and color. The trick I like to use when filling these up is to group the fill strokes that are in the same color. This way it's easier to come back later and try out different color combinations. Another thing worth mentioning is that the eraser strokes can actually be used as sort of masks as well. Let me show you an example of this. So earlier I used a low opacity eraser stroke to lighten up parts of the gradient, but what if I wanted to, say, add more grey airbrush around the vault of the shoe? I'll activate the shadows layer and set up the airbrush tool with a dark grey color. Now let's add some more shadow on this area. That's a bit too wide. Alright good, so now we've added more shadow in this area. And as you can see, it leaks over the nice crisp transition we got going on here. If I pick the eraser stroke up, it won't mask the new airbrush stroke because it was drawn behind it. But what I can do now is drag the eraser stroke on the layer it's already located and it will rearrange to the top of its layer. This way it masks both of the airbrush strokes below it and now we got our nice crisp transition back with the extra shadow added. Before I go on to the next stage, I'll fill in those shoelaces and group them by color as I did earlier with the body of the shoe. Next thing I'm gonna do is add some texture to the grey fabric on the shoe. Again, I'll start by creating a layer for it, then name it appropriately. Then I'll open the object panel, where you can already see some of my personal pattern objects I've created on concepts. I'll pick up the crosshatch pattern and drag it onto the canvas. I'll close the object panel, deactivate rotation on the object and make sure the scaling is on. Now I can scale up the pattern until it looks good on the shoe. The pattern simply consists of a group of straight wire strokes, so it's easy to adjust it as a whole. I imagine this to be a sort of stitching on the fabric, so I lighten up the color a bit, making the stitches stand out a little more. That already looks a bit better, but what I still need to do is to rearrange the layer to the top, where the shadows won't be hiding it. Now I'll apply the same method as I did with the shadow gradient before. I'll set up the eraser opacity to 100, and as you can see I tend to zoom in and out a lot while I'm doing this. This is because the stroke size of the eraser is adaptive meaning that it stays the same size regardless to your zoom level, making it fast and easy to reach the most detailed parts. It's worth pointing out that this kind of a texture could be done using a bitmap image just as well, although you would lose most of the freedom and control provided by a vector. 
Okay, now the texture looks alright, but it still lacks some dimension. To make it a bit more believable, I'll blend it in the edges by dropping the eraser opacity all the way down to 5.6 and use it to feather the far ends of the pattern. I'm aiming to do the blending using only one stroke, so it will be easier to later adjust if necessary. That's looking way better now. What I still need is some highlights, so I'll create a layer for that and have it on the top of all the layers. Then I pick up the pen tool, set the color to white and start highlighting. This time I'll use a 64% opacity on the highlight pen. It's always a fun part of the process because you get such an effect with so little effort. I also go to the shadows layer and add a couple of tiny drop shadows using a grey low opacity fill tool. And before moving to the final step, I decide to add a bit of detail to the line work as well. Finally, I lowered the opacity of the sketch layer a bit, still leaving it visible. A simple yet effective trick to add more sense of space to your drawing is to make the bottom surface reflective. I won't be needing all the layers for this, so I'll tap the visibility icons on most of them, leaving only the highly valued ones visible. I did this so I can now easily select them, then copy and mirror everything at once. Once the shape is placed properly, I'll create a new layer called Mirror. I'll use this layer to cover most of the copied graphics I just mirrored using a white airbrush tool that is equally colored with the background. Now I can simply bring back the visibility of all the layers one by one. Then I'll create a background layer and add some lighter grays to the top of the drawing, where the light is coming from. Finally, I'll add a white rectangle shape behind the shoe using the precision mode. And we got ourselves a shoe rendering. Before ending this video, I'd like to go through the key points once more. So the eraser strokes act like any other stroke you draw on the canvas, meaning that any stroke can be turned into an eraser stroke as well. You can freely transform the strokes by using the control points. You can adjust width, opacity or smoothness by using the sliders on the toolbar. Stretching, scaling and rotating also work the way you'd expect. With scaling on, the line weight changes accordingly. And with stretching on, it keeps the initial width. Finally, you can use the eraser strokes as sort of masks. So if I draw something on the eraser stroke, it can later be dragged on its own layer, bringing it to the front and masking all the other lines on the same layer. I think that's it for now. Thanks for watching the whole tutorial. This one was a little longer than usual, but I hope you learned something new about the app. Make sure to leave a like and comment if you will. I'll leave a link for this drawing and our manual below for you to check out. Until next time, keep sketching.